Oh, what the what the hell are you doing? You're 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 making out with the tree. You're having a deeper relationship. I'm loving this tree. You're you're loving the tree. I I uh, didn't know people did that like that. So uh, <laughs> tree hugger, get it? Yeah. Okay. I get it. Man, this tree is massive. This is a pine. And uh, I wanted to take this little video to point out that pines are, in my opinion, weeds. Although this is a very beautiful weed. Wow! It's so enormous and beautiful. And yet, nothing grows underneath it. It's allelopathic. What do you find in there? A lot of good organic matter. And it's moist. That's one nice thing. But it would be nice if it was moist without the killing effect of everything else. Right. It poisons all other plants. There are a few species that can tolerate living under a pine, but there's very few. Um, I, know, I know about the natives burning out dug firs. I've heard it on several occasions. I personally don't have any proof of that. It's just, it's just stories and anecdotes that have that have been in books. It makes a lot of sense that they were burning out the dug firs because underneath dug firs you get a very limited amount of vegetation. They don't allow a lot of food plants to grow underneath them. When you have a monoculture of dug firs, what you normally get underneath them, if it's, if it's re somewhat damp, is fern patches. Just miles and miles of fern. I've seen it before. Those, those, and there's nothing else growing in and amongst that fern. We used to do veg surveys in old growth forests, and when we were in the mixed forests, we saw a far higher density of of vegetation of, of vegetation layer than in the dug fir straight dug fir forests that have been that have been groomed. They were almost sterile. In many cases, there wasn't hardly any patchiness. There were hardly, there were very few other trees, and the vegetation layer is mostly fern. Maybe if you were really lucky, you got some uh, uh, wild ginger, some of the other uh, ground cover kind of kind of plants, or you or you'd wind up with a whole patch of Oregon grape with very little else growing underneath it. Under Doug first, they don't they don't allow a lot of light. They hold a lot of moisture down, but they also take it up in the in the middle of summer. Um, they acidify the soil quite a lot. And over time that duff layer gets so acid that other things won't grow. They grow quick. They grow fast, they shade everything else out, they, um, they're designed for combat in, in the plant world, so they put out various chemicals that, that will inhibit other plant growth. This is the mighty, the glorious, the amazing Sepp Holzer. Here he is in Washington State complaining about American forestry practices. His primary complaint is about monoculture, or managing a conifer-only woodland. He is using the word catastrophe a lot. He is talking about a conifer desert and the lack of biological life here. He suggests that our goal should be a biotope and that what we see here is a recipe for bio-death. He is not advocating elimination of all conifers, quite the contrary, he is advocating diversity. So this dug, tree, dug fir tree on fairly poor soil, here it's uh, 60 to 70 years old. And I can show you oak trees over at the edge of the meadow, which are less less girth, smaller in diameter, that are 200 to 250 years old. Reading the land 
you can figure that Native people burned almost yearly, if not yearly, which suppressed the dug fir, which cannot grow up with that frequency of burning. Well, if you need anything else, you know. And uh, now the dug fir are crowding out the oaks because they can grow faster, taller, and shade them out. They're not, the oaks are not shade taller. The oaks do provide nutrition that the dug fir don't in the form of acorns. So they were more more useful for the native people. And they're compatible with an understory of fruiting trees and shrubs and bulbs and seed bearing perennials and annuals. They're a whole complex of edible plants. A native agroforestry. It's an Oregon white oak. And uh, which ranges from California to BC. And this tree here, my guess is it's 250 years old. You can tell by the low branches that it's always grown in the open. And now there's just beginning to be some dug fir crowding it. So this tree was a small oak when there were still native people burning, managing this land, harvesting camas and, and uh, Wyethia sunflower and Brodiaea bulbs and things like that. The tarweed, what the early settlers called uh, native wheat. So that's this is this tree is saying that this this land is uh, you know a traditional camas ground, white oak savanna, which is the other Oregon old growth. So in this case, the Douglas fir tree is the uh, would you say it's the invasive? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> dreadfully invasive. <laughs> And they make really good lumber, fortunately. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com, where we talk about woodland management, homesteading, and permaculture all the time.